just give it the old good afternoon i'm cora smith you've watched me bring these bees from anuculus to producing honey we're going to take the honey off of it right now i'm going to show you how and then just do it okay all right ready go good afternoon i am cora smith and i'm going to show you uh, how to rob your hive are going to take off the lid and enter cover and then we're going to put the fume board on here and we're going to let it sit for 10 minutes and that is going to get all the bees out of the Go ahead and remove your inner cover. box. Okay, now tell them, tell them where you're at and what you got going. So, I have about three frames that I will be harvesting. So we're going to go ahead and take the whole box off. And then... Are you going to condense them down so yes. you're going to pull the honey super off? Yes. Go ahead and remove the queen excluder. Mm -hmm. Then you'll replace the inner board and the outer cover. Yes. Then the next time we come out to check on your bees, we're going to give them some DFM. Yep. Then we're going to put some mite stri strips in to clean them up for Varroa. Yep. And then you're, they're kind of going to be on their own through the fall flow to put back anything they may eat during the dearth, which we mm -hmm. have entered now. Yes. And and so they'll, they'll fill up with, we hope, goldenrod nectar. Yes. First frost, goldenrod will all be killed. We'll put in your entrance reducer. And these bees will go into winter. Mm -hmm. Periodically, all you'll do is come out and lift the back of the box for weight. Yep. And, and we'll either understand that they're getting lighter or they're maintaining a weight of which we think there's enough food. Yes. If not, then we'll do fall feed. And mm -hmm. of course, the folks out there watching you will get to see you feed your bees yes. in the winter and see your techniques for that. So tell them how long we're, we're... So we'll keep this on here for 10 minutes. And what it does is the, f the sun, it will hit this and it um, makes the honey be gone evaporate. And it goes out into this hive, into this box, and it gets all the bees from this super into the lower supers. And then that way when you take this off, it doesn't take that many bees. So it allows you to move the super, the honey super off, transport it to where we're going to extract the honey and not have to deal with the bees. Yes. Or at least we don't want to deal with the bees. Hopefully it gets the majority of them, right? Yes. Okay. Well, you got a very nice hot day for this to be happening. Have yes. you walked around to see if you got bees? Are you pushing bees? Are they are they building up out front? A little. They're fanning like crazy. Population thickening. They may be trying to reverse the flow of that honey bee gone. Yeah. You've not quite been on five minutes, and I would think with the sunlight that we've we've gotten a heat that five minutes will probably clear that shallow super. Okay. It was All on right, this side. Do you feel like it's time? Oh, uh, I guess. Or do you think we're Wait, rushing them? Will you carry this? We may, not, we may be rushing them. Yeah, I say leave it on for those. There's not that many bees outside, so. Okay. And I'd say you have shoved them down. I see you sure you don't want that bottom hey, flipper of that honey? Oh, of course, need... there's something there. It's a brick. <laughs> Woo! That's all of it, Cora. Every hive knocked down. Honey in the house. Stuff. What do you think? 
Pretty good little pool, wasn't it? Yeah. And here you started bees in May. first of May. Brought them through two supers, added a honey super, and I think there was at least four frames of capped in it. Five. That's five? That's even better. Congratulations, you did a great job on your first run. All right, Cora and I started yesterday afternoon uh, in mom's yard pulling honey. We brought home nine supers, she said. We just finished pulling the supers here at our home, uh, including Cora's. We pulled 11 boxes. Uh, we've moved the uh, 20 supers into the shop. Uh, we've got a nice cleaned out corner. We've made preparation to uncap and spin the honey. They got the extractor set up, the uncappings tank. Corinne is in there right now getting started while we were finishing this project up out here. Um, Cora and I and Mr. Jason have, have gotten very hot out here today, but that's honestly what it takes is these hot days. It drives the fume boards, which drives the bees. We've cleared them. We're gonna move inside now, show you some footage in there of uh, extracting. So stay with us. We're gonna roll more of that beautiful bee footage. Thanks for watching. This is a much larger operation than just a few jars. So how did you start out? Well, John's parents, um, Johnny and Josanelle, were, they were the beekeepers and Johnny was the beekeeper. He kept bees his entire life. And um, back when Cora was a baby, so 10 years ago, um, he had had a stroke, went to the nursing home. And so at that point, um, we, we kind of took over the, the honey processing and the extracting. Initially, when they were doing it, when they first started, his mother would crush and strain. It was Johnny's uh, job to go out and he'd bring the supers in and he'd sit down on the front porch in his rocking chair and roll him a cigarette. <laughs> and then Joe Sunil's part would start and she would crush and strain it. Um, talk about weeks of work, but even after they got an extractor, when we took over, they had um, the same four frame extractor that we were using up until this year. And they would, she would uncap it. She put it in, this, in the extractor. I think he would spin it. And then she had individual filters, like tea filters on a, a handle. And she would put only wide mouth jars because it was easier to filter in. And she would put that filter on that wide mouth jar and filter every single jar that came out of the extractor. Uh, it took two to three weeks for them to extract because they were extracting every bottle that came out. Um, so when, when we took over, we said, hey, you know what, there is an easier way to do this. And that's when we got even just buckets in the big filters and filtered the entire bucket when it came out. Um, but his mother is uh, 91, she'll be 92 this November, and she still does the bottling for us. Um, we take the buckets to her when we've got them ready to go and put them up on her table and she'll call one of us or Zach, um, her grandson, and say, I need another bucket put up on the table and she'll bottle each each jar still. So wow. um, it's truly a family legacy and an inheritance that they pass down to us. That's awesome. Yeah. And we've got a bucket almost full. Okay, so we've left the bee yard we came in we've gotten our jackets off got on a dry shirt and clothes uh, it's a lot better in here now we'll turn the fans on when we're not filming it's hard to hear can't hardly hear ourselves talk when we got the fan running all it's doing is moving 86 degree air in here you can't extract honey in under the air conditioning as deeply as that grieves me and everyone else it just will not sling out of the cells on the comb that the bees have drawn. So you're talking about capped frames of honey like this one. They've filled these cells in the comb. They've put this sheen of wax over top of it. This has to be removed. Once it's removed, you have an open cell. All these open cells, you have open frames of honey. These cells are built, and I'm going to exaggerate this, the cells are built 
on an angle. It's 30%, 30 degree, 25 degree angle in adjacent so that when they store the honey, it's being stored in a cell that is, that is on, and this is exaggerated, but it's being stored in a cell that is on a steep angle so that the nectar doesn't run out when they get it full. Once that gets up there and full, the bees fan and, and dehumidify that nectar, and now it is time to cap. They place the cap on it. That The honey underneath will be 17 to, to 19% uh, water. So, so what they've done by the fanning and the drying is they've remo removed that moisture. You want it to be down in a low moisture content or the honey would ferment. Uh, that's why you spin the honey after it is capped. So these now would go from here to Corinne. She has her uncappings tank. So when she cuts a sheet of the cap off and exposes the cell of honey, it will fall down into this, this tank. The tank has a screen in the bottom that I don't know that you'll be able to see the way it is, but the capping set here and drip, the screen keeps the wax from falling into the bottom of the bin. The bin's collecting the raw honey that's dripping. We have a gate on it, so we reclaim that honey. The wax cappings will, as soon as they're dry, they will be packed out into gallon freezer bags and put in the freezer and that will stop anything, moths, beetle larvae, anything that's in them will, will be frozen. Tell them how we learned about that. If you leave this cappings dry and you think all is well and you put it in a tote and you snap a lid on it and you put it in your wife's pantry, gentlemen, problem is when you hear her scream, she didn't drop something. She's coming in there looking for you because now the floor is crawling with wax larva and or hive beetle larva that hatches because you have created an incubator. You have to freeze this first before you go into any form of rendering process. Don't store it hot, don't store it somewhere and, and think that it's gonna be okay. It has to go for a, through a freeze cycle and best that it can stay that way before you, before you render it and turn it into clean wax. And we've kept it in there for more than a year uh, just not getting to it and it was perfectly fine uh, the, the wax once it's frozen it, it's not going to go bad it, it's good um you she gets these ready they're uncapped the extractor setting here we're loading it it holds 18 frames in this extractor the frames go in it is a radial unit once we have the frames all full up, we'll start the spin and it will clear all both sides in the right hand spin. When the centrifugal force comes up, it will pull the honey from those cells out like this and start hitting the barrel run down the side of the tank accumulate here at the valve and run through a double strain system into a five gallon bucket which has a gate so that later on we can jar up our honey out of the, the buckets. Uh, it won't take long when we start this spin. I'll have to stop, shut the gate down and change out a bucket and we'll show you that just briefly. All right, that is number 18, we have an extractor full. Cora is going to start her up slow and let everything get seated. And by that, you see that they're kind of leaning out of the notch. She'll bring it up, bring the extractor up, Cora, and let's show the folks what we got going. Done. Okay, go to plus sign, start giving it a little juice. Okay, don't hold it, there, okay. We're going to make sure everything gets, I hear them settling in. Kind of watch, I see one that's out of place. Turn it back down. Huh? 
And then I'll turn the brakes on. Perfect. Stopped it right where it needed to be. Okay, bring it back up. Still leaning. One more. Still got that one frame, don't we? Did it go in yet? No. Slow it? I think it's gonna be okay. All right, power it on up till we see it hitting the side of the tank. Oh, don't go too many increments at once. Okay, I see, all right, I see the honey hitting the barrel, so we'll have it running here just briefly. And then I'm gonna have to be ready to change that up. Does anybody besides me see a color difference in this batch? It looks a bit darker. Will it still taste the same? Yeah, it'll be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Alright, Cora, what I want you to do is start. Now, give me just. Let me check something here real quick. Alright, we like Shoot. half an inch, Shoot. then I want you to start bringing your speed control down. Yep. It's coming up fast. We got a lot in that, so alright, bring your speed down. That'll probably make a bucket that's left draining. Leave it at the speed or bump it up. I'm at three dots, barely. This is best done like that. Not always a very clean process. Granny, you pitch me a little rag. Mm -hmm. Is a 60 pound pail. <laughs> Replace our dryer rack. New bucket. open back to running definitely a darker now head. speed your speeder back up should they be <laughs> yes. we all hear the ringing this time but bumper up bumper up ludicrous speed 
You've got to give her all she's got. <laughs> Pull her up to the point of breaking. That's all the way. What was it they always said? Daddy, that's all the way. Captain, she's cracking up. Daddy, that's all the way. Yeah, suck her down until you get more to the wall. Can't do it, Captain. Yes, you can't take it. She doesn't have the power. Back a little down. I'm at four. Down to Not three. Down one. One. Bump up one more. Good Sunday afternoon. We've uh, got up and went to church this morning, and as usual, we've we've come over to my mother's house, my childhood home, uh, to have lunch. And I'd like to introduce you to my mother, Josephine Smith. She is the founder of the feast, so to speak. She bottles up our honey. Uh, her and Dad had sold honey for years and years. Um, absolutely a blessing to have her here with us today. She's going to show you how that she jars this honey off and then we're going to take a uh, re refractometer and check the moisture levels in the honey, kind of show y'all how to do that. It might be something you're interested in. Um, Mama, if you would, are you ready to run a jar of honey? I'm ready. All right, well. Now she's the one that started this all, her and Paul, right? Her and your dad? Absolutely. I, 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 we won't speculate or guess at how many jars of honey this lady has ran in some 50, 60 years, but uh, she has definitely filled a jar or two, haven't you, Mama? Yes, I have. <laughs> how many years would you say? Oh, goodness. Maybe 30? At least 30. At least 30. You'd well, let's say 30 not, years would be 1990, right? You're not taking into consideration that, that I'm almost 54. Well. <laughs> you have been filling jars a long time. Yeah, and it wasn't this easy either when we started. How'd you start? Well, I, don't ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> People don't know, they only know this way. They don't know how it originally got, how you had to do it before all this. I took the, the squeezed the wax, the honey out of the wax with my hands and then got put it, run it over into a, a cheesecloth thing to get it strained out. And it took a long time. <laughs> so, after, so after you mashed it with your hands. Yes, after then I you, mashed then it Then you with poured that hand. through cheesecloth to do the straining. Yes. And then at that point, you went back and had to jar it. Yes. Yeah. And and then y'all uh, just kind of word of mouth, people found out that uh, dad was keeping bees and that you was putting honey in jars for sale. Mm -hmm. And uh, they came from well we didn't have it for sale we hadn't advertised or anything they just kept coming wanting honey <laughs> so he kept getting more bees but before long you, you had a little extra money coming in yes um we did go back to the to the first jar that you can remember selling what that jar of honey cost oh i i don't have any idea in fact, we gave most of it away at first, well, just, it, just to our friends. Is it fair to say, I think the earliest time that I saw money change hands for a quart of honey, it was about $5. Well, it might have been, yeah. People, people would uh, not be okay with that now, Mama. <laughs> no, they wouldn't. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a labor of love to begin with. There's work in it, isn't there? A lot of work to it. But Johnny loved it, and didn't Johnny he? Johnny loved it, every bit of it. Now, when it came to bottling, how much did he love that? Oh, he didn't. <laughs> Is, no, he is, did the hard work. Is it safe to say that uh, the honey came in and hit the porch, and it oh. was kind of on you then? Yeah. At that point? Yeah, it was on me. 
And I see you've got your system here. You've got your yeah, gate. You won't. You're fine. You got your gate where you can lock it. Yeah. And uh, I'll, I'm going to slide one of your jars over here. And we'll get a, a little dollop of it and put it on the refractometer. And tell folks a little bit about this. I'm going to borrow one of your toothpicks. Joseph, now what year did Johnny start keeping bees? Do you remember? He had bees from the time we were first married. What year was that? Was in 56. Okay. Now, did his did his dad keep bees? Uh, not that I know of. Well, what got him started? Do you remember? He was just by himself, mainly. He stayed with his uh, grandmother and uh, just liked to go out in the woods and be by himself. And when he found a bee tree, well, he got he would cut it down and, and get him up having a beehive started or or else he would go back to the tree and get the honey hmm. um, if he didn't i guess that was while he was still young that he did that well so i know he did a lot of bee because he was coursing bees to find them well yeah yeah and he knew he knew what to do uh, he learned by himself though he, he was kind of a man of the woods anyway yes, wasn't he, he? Was. Hmm. All right, Corinne, can you tell what I've got going on here or you, where you can see this? We have a refractometer. We carry these at Central Beekeeper Supply. What we're wanting to find out is the moisture content in the honey. So if the honey bees have not capped a cell, but yet we end up spinning some that was not capped into the capped honey. Typically your capped honey will wash. Your capped honey is dry enough to absorb the extra moisture in that comb honey that was not. So with that being said, I'm going to load a dollop here, a small one on the refractometer. Okay, hang on, let me get this. I'm haven't gotten this stick completely down yet. Well, if you are pushing buttons, that could have been why. Okay, so we load a droplet of honey onto the slide. You try to do it without foam and without interference from anything else, such as breath, moisture, moisture content in the air. We close down our slide you see it on the prism. Now it's made a circle, it's thinned that out. What we're doing is now we're gonna look into the refractometer in ambient light and, and it is going to refract the water from solid honey and pick up the water refraction that's in that honey and separate that in the finder. So when I look into the refractometer. I have a Brix reading, which is our substance. We have a water percentage, which is what we're after. So this honey, between a defined blue line and a white line, is 18% moisture content. If you can, it's as simple as Googling it these days, but you can Google um, excessive water content in honey, where will fermentation start, which by the way, the fermentation is the only concern you have with jarring and bottling honey. Um, in time, if the water content is too high in the honey, it will start to ferment, build a gas, and in some cases, it's been known to blow the lids off of these containers. The honey at that point is too green to sustain a shelf life. So the lower, the better. Anything really and truly, if it can be up to 20% um, if eaten, if it is going to be consumed in a relatively short time. Uh, 18 and lower, you're hitting in that margin where it has a forever shelf life. So 
I don't know, I would like to hold this refractometer. This is just a shot in the dark. And I don't know if it will even show this, mm -mm. but it would be great wait, if yep. it would. Now I'm interfering with the camera operator. Yep, and where the blue line is, there are 18. Maybe Jason can make this look good, right there. So that's what you just saw what I see when I look into the refractometer. I call that 18. You may have to adjust the eyepiece. I probably can't see. Two. Oh, there it is. There you got it. Yeah. So, so yeah. we're we're perfectly fine. We knew in reality that we had a good dry enough honey to do this. We didn't run anything that was not capped. Um, just this now. is just an interesting instrument for y'all to know is available if you have questions about your moisture content. Joe Snell, what, did y'all ever have any that uh, fermented on you or that you remember? Not that I remember. Johnny ever tested with that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Just skill and knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> Don't pull it if it's not capped. That's pretty safe. That's your safest bed in it, Mother. Just yes. run it when it's all capped. Yes. Over over time, you saw a lot of honey come in. You've seen absolute drums of honey run on your porch. You've seen years where there wasn't, wasn't hardly any. ten buckets of honey yeah. run. Um, that's kind of the way life is. We don't. We get what we get, and we don't throw a fit, according to my my daughter. Um, it's that life goes on, and we continue to wonder what the camera operator is doing at this moment. To catch back around. And now you're back with us today. All right, we wanted to share a little bit of Sunday's activities with you. Um, we're having a big time. We hope you are. We're enjoying time with, with family, uh, doing what we do as a family. And until we see you again, roll that beautiful bee footage. Thank you, Mother. Great job. Thank you for watching us. And I hope that me doing these videos have helped you um, get through the spring. And until we see you again. Roll that beautiful bee footage. Yeah. <laughs> Good job.